Hello everyone. So we have seen in the previous lectures a brief introduction of the linked list. So in the linked list, we have seen the definition of the linked list. That linked list is a collection of a nodes. Nodes contain the two parts, the data path as well as the address of the next node. And it is arranged in a certain fashion that we get a linked list formation. So we have seen the pictorial diagram of a linked list as shown here. So then we have also seen the why we are using the linked list, different type of linked list. So we can summarize the previous class as follows. So node has the two parts, the data part and the next part. Then the linear or node can like the linked list can be described as a linear ordered collection of a node. Node contains the data and the next. Next means the address of the next node. So pictorially a linked list can be shown as this. So D, S and A are the data part. 600, 700 and the null are the pointer part. So you can see that uh, in the first node, the in the pointer part we are storing the 600 that is the address of the next node. In the second node we are storing 700 that is the address of the third node. And head pointer will contain the address of the first node. So this is the pictorial diagram of the linked list. And then in today's lecture we will see the lecture or uh, today's lecture outline is the array versus linked list. Link list as ADT, we will see how to define a list uh, node using the structures, operation supported on the linked list and the linked list traversal pseudocode. So let us start. So we will see the array versus linked list. So in array it is very simple to use, simple and easy to use. So we can define an array using the simple syntax in the C or the C++. It is faster. Uh, access it gives a faster access to the random element using the index so using ai you can access the any uh, array elements in a very fast way so it is stored in a contiguous fashion so it also gives uh, it other advantage that by the virtue of the contiguous storage uh, storage this works very well with the catch memory why it works well with the catch memory for the contiguous array memory location because the memory transfer between your hard disk and the ram happens in a block so even if you ask for a single a3 it will transfer a complete block and the nearby block most probably the whole array element will be there so you the whole array element will be transferred from the your hard disk to the your ram and from ram to the cache so whenever you access the other array element say a5 so it will be already present in the cache memory hence it will have the faster access so these are the advances so contrary to that linked list uh, using and the linked list the code is little cumbersome compared to the array we need to define a structure we need to have a, a defined functions to do the operations on the linked list it is we cannot access any random element we have to start from the head and then we have to traverse to that element to get access to any element in the linked list but the advantage of the linked list is we can insert or delete at any random position very easily where it in the array to insert or delete at any random position we need to shift the element that is other disadvantage of the array so other disadvantage of the array is that we have to tell in advance what is the size required for the array so that size you have to tell beforehand so in that case some uh, of the size can be wasted or it can be underutilized so you can uh, whereas in the linked list the size can be increased or decreased on demand so you can map this to your pocket money scenario where uh, in the option one your parent can send your fixed amount of pocket money and you do whatever you want to do in that pocket money so if you save it you party otherwise you enjoy in that amount only or in the other mode in the option two your parent can send the amount as and when required so if you have a birthday month they will send you 5k extra for your celebrating your birthday okay then we will move to the linked list ADT so we need to define a structure for a linked list so this way we are defining a structure for a linked list. So we will go through the code part by part. So this type def is a keyword to alias something. Struct is a keyword to define a user defined data type. We have uh, named the uh, user defined data type as a list node. So similarly you have the 
primitive data type like integer character that is already known to the float that these are called what is this is called this is called primitive data type this is already known to the compiler how to store them how to operate on them but this is called list node is called as user defined data type user defined data type so you, you to to define a user defined data type you need to use the keyword struct and then this is the list node is a user defined data type there are two parts one part is the data with data type is the integer other part is the next that is a pointer pointer to the similar kind of node element so we have alias this we don't want to write the struct list node everywhere so we have alias this to a list node and then semicolon so here you can see in the diagram that first part is the data part and this uh, data type is the integer second part is the next that contains the address of next node so list node so this is a list node pointer type of element so uh, this is the data type is the list node pointer element so and address of this node is 500 so suppose this is like this so we you can imagine that there is a, another node here who at the address 600 and it is connected in this fashion so suppose the uh, data here is the 20 and it is pointing to the null so like this is the but this is the definition of one single node okay and by the virtue of the pointer it can be connected in the certain fashion okay this is how we define a structure for a node we are not defining so don't confuse that this is a structure for whole list this is a structure for only node so this is a structure only for the node so this is a only for single node but the way the node contains the next pointer it will be connected and will form a linked list so this is the building block of a list so next what are the operations supported on the linked list so traversing a linked list we can start from the head we can go till the last one by one we can see the each data so that operation is called traversing a linked list then we can have inserting an element in the linked list we can uh, issue a command to insert an element say 15 in the linked list so we can tell to insert at the beginning of the linked list we can tell to insert at the last of the linked list we can tell to insert at any intermediate positions then similarly we can tell to delete an element from a linked list so essentially we will not only delete the element we will delete the complete node containing that element so similar to the insertion deletion can be also performed at the beginning at the end and at the intermediate level then we can search the element so these are the major operations supported on the linked list then we can have the like the delete completely linked list initialize a linked list so that are the operations so what is the initial conditions so these are the operations supported on the linked list so what is the initial uh, what is the initial condition so in the initial condition of the linked list so in the initial conditions of the linked list So we have head will contain a null when there so this means that there are no nodes in the linked list so this is the initial condition of the linked list head is equal to null so we have already seen that in the stack the initial condition in the in case of the stack it was the what was the initial condition in case of the stack top pointer will point to so in the in, in case of the stack top pointer will point to minus one in case of q in case of q when q is empty so the initial condition is the rear equal to minus one and front also equal to minus one this was the initial condition in the stack and the q so uh, initial condition in the linked list is head equal to none so then we'll move forward to see the pseudo code of the traversing a linked list so this is the pseudo code to traverse a linked list so first we'll read line by line then we will see how, uh, like the explanation of each line over the one diagram so for to traverse a linked list we need a head pointer so we will start from the temp we will define a temporary pointer we will start we will place temp to the head and using a while loop 
till the temp is not null we will print the temp arrow data so because temp is a pointer so to access the data element we have to use the arrow operator if temp was a directly structure element we can use the dot operator but since it is a pointer so we have to use the arrow operator temp arrow data and then after accessing the temp data we can proceed temp to the temp next so this is the seven line of the code sudo code to traverse a single linked list so we'll see in the diagram and see the dry run of the code sudo code so this is a linked list so head is pointing to so head will point to head so head will contain the 700 right so head will contain the 700 so head will point here so now we will start we will take a temporary variable so temporary variable will point here so temp will contain so temp will first contain 700 right in the initialization condition then we will print the 19 so it will print the 19 so it will print 19 then we will update the temp to what after printing the 19 this is the while loop no temp is not null so we will print the temp data then we are updating temp equal to temp arrow next so what is the temp arrow next so this is temp equal to 700 temp arrow next is 500 so in its place of 700 we will add it to the 500 so now we have moved to the temp to where so now temp has moved from here to the second location okay temp has moved from here to the second location so temp is here now okay so then we will print the temp data again so what is the temp data first data is was 93 19 then first data is 19 then second data is 23 so we'll uh, we will we will print 23 okay we'll print 23 after that what we are doing inside the while loop because temp is not null so we are doing entering the loop we are printing temp arrow data we are moving forward temp equal to temp arrow next so we'll again cut 500 right and temp will be temp arrow next so what this in at the 500 address temp arrow next is 600 so we'll update is to 600 so we'll delete this 700 we'll delete this 700 we'll delete 500 and what we will do we will write here the 600 so where temp will go now temp will update from here to these places third node so temp will go to the third node temp is pointing now to the third node so temp is pointing now the third node so now again we will print the third data here because temp is still 600 so temp is not null so we'll print temp data temp data is nothing but uh, uh, so we have first data is our 19 second data is 23 so temp will print now 7 and then we'll move temp to temp next so what is the next l next value at the temp temp is now at 600 so temp next is 400 so we'll update this 600 to the 400 so we'll update this 600 to the 400 okay so we'll erase this 600 and we will put this as a 400 here and then so we are going to update the temp to here okay so temp is at the last node now so still is it temp is null temp is null temp is still 400 temp is not null so still the condition satisfied true it will enter the while loop so we will print the last element so what is the last element last element is 45 then we are going to update the temp so what is the temp next temp next is null so we are going to delete this 400 and we are going to put here uh, null okay so we are going to put here null and we are going to update this also temp will go to null so temp will go to the null so then the uh, loop condition becomes false we have outside the loop and we have printed all the element of the loop so we can see that we have printed 1923 745 so that's all for today thank you everyone for your patience i would highly appreciate your feedback and the suggestion in the comment section thank you we'll discuss in the next class uh, the pseudo code of the insertion at the beginning insertion at the end and insertion at intermediate position Thank you everyone.